Hello YouTube, welcome back to another episode of our Factorio tutorial series, uh, version 1.0. Uh, today we're going to be going and hopefully getting green science automated and we're going to discuss how we're setting it up and how we're progressing and uh, what's what. Um, first off, we have red science automated from your last playthrough, I didn't say yesterday, but I guess it could be yesterday. And we're going to uh, expand our setup here a little bit. Um, Build some more inserters. We're gonna make our labs feed into other labs. You can actually chain the labs together. Uh, when you chain the labs together, you can make uh, this up pretty big. You could theoretically make it go forever. But the problem with going forever is the labs won't have enough to go all the way through. The throughput won't be enough because this inserter is only so fast. So if you can't grab enough to feed 20 labs below it, you can't have 20 labs below it. I find that with just a normal inserter, it can do about four or five labs. And if you swap it over to a fast inserter, you can do up to six or seven in the chain. So you could do like this, four, six, eight, but I have to go six max, generally speaking. Um, but yeah, so we got this set up. Uh, we are not making enough red science right now because we only have one lab working. So we are going to speed things up a bit and build some more. Um, in this playthrough, we're going to try and make our builds mostly linear and try and keep them kind of clean. Uh, there's another thing that we see going on here right now is our copper is only on one side of the belt. We want copper on both sides of the belt. There's an easy way to do that. And so right now it's only getting put on the one side. We can totally tell that just by looking at it. It's only going on the uh, left side, right side, whatever you want to call that. So what you do is put a splitter here and force it to go on the other side of the belt. If you just put a splitter like this, it does nothing because everything's coming in on this side and it won't put it on that side because that's not how a splitter works. Splitter just bounce, puts the same thing out on one side as the other side. But if you do that, now we're putting on both sides, easy. So now we have both sides of the belt working. And we'll build some more of these guys. And we'll make sure our copper is actually producing as we set it up. So there we go. We actually have copper. Uh, maybe make another mining drill or two. While we're in the vicinity, we'll make this happen. So this guy here, actually, as we look here, we have copper on both sides of the line. What's happening here is this is actually mining both copper and iron. Copper and coal. And you can see on the expected resources, this is 89,000 coal and 11,000 copper. You can see that on the right side right over there. So he's actually mining both, which is actually a problem for me. There's an easy way to sort that, though. Um, what you could do is have to be on its own line. So we're going to redirect this line here for a second. I do like this. So what you could do is use splitters again because we're kind of making a mess here and do a filter splitter. So it's now going to be grabbing the copper and putting the copper onto that side of this belt. And we want the copper on the inside and the coal on the outside. So now, even if it's the wrong resource coming out of here, it's going to filter the copper on this side and then the copper is going to be stuck on that top there. So it doesn't really matter that it's the wrong resource anymore. We kind of uh, fixed the problem. So we could double mine resources and it won't be a problem for us. And then we'll pick up these belts because we don't need them anymore. And yeah, right click to pick up. We're going to keep grabbing these resources here, though. While we have the factory up and running, because why not? It's resources that we have and might as well make it work for us. Uh, so I can tell here I'm not, not making enough copper, really, but that's okay. Z again to quickly drop items. You can actually drop items on the ground, too. F to pick up. And we're going to do the exact same thing with the irons. The irons on one side of the belt. We want on both sides. We want more resources. Right now, they're not offloading because they have no room to offload. We'll put that there. And now we have copper or iron on both sides. Now, if I go look on the power line here for a second, you see satisfaction is in red. We are using more power than we have. So we need around 2 megawatts, and we're only producing 900 kilowatts. So we're going to expand our power setup here, which is already almost set up to be set up or expanded in two seconds here. Throw that down. 
We're making another boiler, and then we're making another steam engine. So the steam turbine goes right there. And then you go there, and you go there. And again, we're pressing Q on top of the item to make it work. Now we might decide to do the same thing with the coal here. We'll fill both sides of the line. That way this guy has enough fuel for future problems. Uh, for future expandability. There we go. So now we're making some science. Uh, these guys don't have long inserters. So there's a way to tell buildings are working or not by quickly looking at them. Uh, you can see that the gears aren't moving. It's kind of hard to tell like that though, but if you hover over the building, it says products finished. This only made one. And at the same time, this made 39. So when you're setting your factory up, sometimes things won't be set up properly. Like this right here. It wasn't quite set properly because it produces zero. But you might not know that by looking at stuff quickly because it's hard to tell the gears working, this and that. But if you hover over it and see that all of a sudden, why does this one make 30 and this one made zero? Hmm. So debugging, problem solving. Quickly fix that problem. And we'll make some more of these guys too. F to pick up items. And now we're actually teching quite quickly. So we're actually just going to tech everything that we can. That just requires red science. And green being the next step here. Let's get all that red stuff out of the way. Now we're going to want to start making some green electronic circuits. That way we can automate making inserters. Uh, we can automate making assemblers. And we can automate making all the things that we want to make. Everything we're handcrafting right now, we want to be automated. We don't want to be doing this forever like this. There's a couple ways of doing this. Right now we're going to put a splitter here. And we're going to pull the copper line. This guy is on a splitter. It still actually works. It'll pull from a splitter. It looks like it might not be able to, but it will pull from a splitter. And now we're going to divide the line. So we have the gears going this way. And we have the copper plates going up. So we never interrupted this. We just added a little gap. Kind of works nicely. Cool. Now over here, we're going to make circuits. Hopefully the spaceship doesn't get in my way. No, nope, should be good. Now, circuits are an interesting item because it requires one cop one iron one iron plate and three copper cables. So here down here, we're belting gears. But here it needs three copper cables, and each time you use one plate, you make two copper cables. Each time you make each time here you use sorry, right here. Each time you use two iron plates, you make one gear. It's actually exact opposite. So we're gonna make one use one of these plates to make two cable over here. And you're like, okay, that's cool. Who cares? Now the only reason we want to know this is because this belt has, I don't know, let's say uh, each section has six copper plates on it. Now six copper plates actually translates to twelve cable. So a full belt like this actually is gonna make two full belts of copper cable. And it gets kind of crazy because once you start making a lot of green circuits, there's gonna be cable everywhere so cable is really kind of one of those items that you don't want to belt you want to do what we did down here and directly insert it so we're going to grab the copper cable and we're going to directly insert it into our green guy here this takes half a second to make each one and this one right here uh doo -doo -doo. this one right here it takes half a second to make two as well so you, it's generally two of these for one like that. Instead, we're going to do two, or it's one and a half we're going to be using per. Don't like that. There's lots of different designs for this. This is one of the items that people like to optimize a lot. Um, we do have an issue with this, though, because the inserter here is actually too slow. He can't grab enough resources fast enough for that building. So we're going to do double inserters. Don't have to. One would work. But for our purpose here, we're going to just set it up like this. There's like a 500,000 different ways of setting this up. This is not the way I always go. I kind of do things differently all the time. It's more fun that way. Just experience, experiment with builds. But uh, I find this is a okay style. Now we need to get the iron plates here. Now this setup here is just a little bit in the way. So if we wanted this line to be straight and go across like that, it's kind of blocked, right? It's kind of seems like it's just a little bit in the way. So we're actually going to go underneath the building. You could pick it up and move it. 
Or I could do this. Go underneath the building. Now the cool thing about doing this, the underground with the with the yellow underground be belt, is you could actually grab like that and start directly into the building. It's another design idea for you, if you wanted iron plates into that building. If you were into that kind of thing. And we're going to offload long and we're going to grab short. So we're diverting the belt here again and we're going to go up like that and the green chips are going to go down like that. Now what you see forming here is what they consider a bus in quotation marks. Uh, why you consider this a bus is because everything is kind of in a nice straight line. And it's very easy to see what's going on. You can tell that I have some gears, I have some copper, I have some iron, I have some green chips. Right? It's pretty, very, very simple. And we can expand it quite easily here too. And it's really easy to pull items off of this bus line. Uh, for this playthrough tutorial, I'm going to kind of keep it nice and clean. You can do spaghetti. Spaghetti. <laughs> I don't know why I would say it like that. You can do spaghetti as well where things just kind of fit where they fit. But because of the tutorial series, I need to make sure that you guys can kind of follow what I'm doing. So we'll keep it nice and clean. There's a couple styles you can do with the uh, the bus style, but uh, I feel like this is a clean enough that you guys can figure out what's going on. And the same thing here again. Got some more inserters. Put you there like that. Couple more long ones. And then the short ones there. Easy. Now we have that set up. Now we have an interesting uh, predicament again because we have four of these guys going here. And it's only going on one side of the belt. And you can't really put the splitter here. You couldn't do this either. Because it just goes on the top side. So what you actually do is you just put a gap like that. What you actually do. What you could do is do like that and go like that. But now we have two on the top and two on the bottom. We can do output priority. And always force it to go from these two buildings. will be on the top side of the belt. And the, bottoms on the, the bottom ones will be on that side. So the top two will be on the inside. And the bottom two will be on the outside. Hopefully that makes sense. Now we're going to start making some of the parts we need for inserters. So we go look at the inserters for a second. Inserters need electronic circuits, iron gear wheels, and iron plates. We actually have iron gear wheels there, which is not something I would normally belt, but why not? Why not? And we're going to do the exact same thing as we kind of did down there. I'm going to go like that. I'm just going to use a long inserter to grab there. And the iron plates are right there. And then the gears will be right here. Ah, now you're seeing a little bit of organization goes a long way. And it's very simple to do this organization too. So put you there. Put you right there. And this will be nice because we're We'll have all the inserters automated and we don't have to handcraft them anymore. And shift right click to copy the building and shift left click to paste it. So now all the buildings are building the same thing. And we'll put some power lines in between. I like to do the nice spacing. That way you can put the power line in between and everybody kind of has their power and everyone's happy. It looks pretty clean-ish. Now, if your factory is a big mess before you get to green science, that's quite fine. It's even a fine if you uh if it's a big mess before you get to science or before you get to the rocket launch because once you get bots you can really 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 clean your factory up bots do a really really great job of cleaning a factory up it can go from super 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 messy to very very clean very quickly so now we have a lot of belts we've almost too many belts here so what i do is I click the x and you limit the chest size so chests now can only have one two three four inserted from the building. It's like going to have 400 belts inserted. And this extra stack here, you can put whatever you want in that. It's just going to... The, the building will not insert into the orange. Is that orange? Or red? It just won't insert into that. So, now you know. 
Uh, then we took a look on our line here, and we're like, wow, we have no iron anymore. Iron is completely gone. So we're utilizing all our iron. So what we're going to do for that is we're going to expand our smelting. Build a bunch of these dudes. We're going to go over to our stone quickly as well, and we're going to refuel it. And our science is teching quite nicely. We're just starting out in our playthrough. Uh, control right click to pick all the copper out of there. Grab all that out again. This chest might actually be full. Yep. We'll grab all that and we'll make a ton of furnaces. That's pretty much one of the only uses of furnaces right at the beginning of the game. And then we'll expand this here. We go two and two and two and two. And now we're not really sure how much this line actually provides. How far can we make this go? Can we make it go 50 down? 50 buildings like this? Um, I think 16 would probably be a good amount. You can keep going forever, but eventually there'll be no resources left in the line. And you're going to have to add a secondary setup. So right now that works. Cool. Uh, we don't actually make that much raw ore is coming out of the ground right now. So I'm going to grab more of these and expand our mining setup here. Because we now need more. Oh, I'll throw some of these mining drills on here. I do believe it's like uh, 28 or something to saturate a yellow belt. Something like that. Something like 28. If you were to do some math, you could probably figure it out, but close enough. And we'll grab a couple more because we need lots more iron. We just don't have enough iron right now. So you could either wait to get more iron or you could just make more. And the thing with Factorio is generally you want to make more. And we can use all of this, no problem. No problem. So we got 15 there right now. We just do a quick check. We'll go 16. And then we're going to add another line. I'm going to put another whole smeltery on top of here. So I want maybe... I don't know. 10 more. Because we are just eating our iron. Which is good. But you got to watch the power as well. Make sure you don't run out of power. So we're going to quickly add coal to this line as well. So we have our iron on the top side. and want the coal on the inside. And we're going to do an output priority again. This doesn't have to always have coal on it, but this does. Because this goes to our actual power. So now we have coal on one side and copper or iron on the other side. I have to pick up the items. Control left click to dump in the building if you have extra stuff sitting in your inventory. Now, we don't want to build too much on the patch because at one point, at some point, we want to utilize this entire patch. So right now, we will block a bit of the patch, but we don't want to block all of it. I'm going to go grab our inserters. We automated them, so I could handcraft some, but we'll just automate it. Quickly check the power. You can actually hover over the power line, and it will show that green bar. If the bar is green, it means you're good. If it's yellow, it means you're having brownouts. If it's red, it means you have some serious power problems. You should maybe consider addressing that right now. And I know that our power is going to be on the edge again quickly. So I'm going to make it a little bit more power. Is this the only way to set up smelting? Uh, definitely not. There's thousands of different ways of setting it up. Um, and I'll let you play with that. Is this the most efficient? I don't think so either, but I wouldn't like to show you the best way of doing something. I'd just like to show you a way of doing something. And then we grab this. I'm going to run it over here, and we're going to join right next to this line here.
And we'll join our lines together. This line here right now is only on one side again as well. We'll do that. Easy. And maybe add a little bit more here because the line is saturated. So now we've uh, quadrupled our iron output, give or take. And we've also probably doubled our power consumption in quite a short amount of time. The factory is growing quickly. That's one of the cool things with this game. You grow faster and faster and faster. So now we have that going. We're going to grab a couple more assemblers. Uh, we should have a good amount of iron coming down now if I stop picking up by hand. Maybe just one more. Always one more. Grab some of those. And down here, it doesn't have quite enough iron, it looks like. There we go. Beautiful. And control, click those out of there. Grab some more iron for my handcrafting needs. I'm going to grab some more assemblers. We're going to grab some belts because we only have 22. Now, you could use the hot bar down here as well. Um, if you actually don't use the hotkeys, that's fine. But having a setup like this is you can actually just check how much is in your inventory. Just by looking at the number in the bottom, it says 222. And then two undergrounds. And then one splitter. So you can just quickly check what you have and what you don't have. Now this line I'm actually going to make go the other way. Because this is actually needed for science. Inserters are needed for science. Um, one and one. It also needs a belt. And we already automated belts down there. But generally speaking, if I am going to be making something for science, I don't want it on the bus. It's kind of doing its own thing. It's kind of its own little world. We could actually just drop it on the same line there. Like this. So you are going to make belts, 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 and then the ones in between are going to make gears. And then we're going to direct insert from building to building into each into each other. Like that. And then this belt here doesn't need to be here anymore. So we'll pick that up. And then we have you. We're going to drop that into there, there, there. And that's going to drop on the other side of the belt. So notice that this guy is dropping off on the far side. This is also going to drop the far side. But it'll be on this belt. And now they both will be sharing their items in the belt. It'll be awesome. I'm going to put them in the middle. That way they can have power on both sides of the building. I have a little bit of time played in this game, and yet I still make a, a silly, not really a mistake, but uh, silly setups that don't really work as well as intended. And then we'll pull this line here. I can tell how, why having a bus like this is very simple and easy. Makes your life easy. Now, what eventually will happen is there's going to be too much getting pulled off this line. This one yellow belt won't be able to support enough. So you remember we put a splitter here at the very beginning where everything kind of accumulated. Grab some of these. We're actually going to have a secondary line here. We'll go underneath, though. We'll go on the bottom side here. Now we have two full belts of iron coming at us. I'm gonna make that a bit bigger. And I can go that splitter. So if for some reason, this entire row up here was eaten and this entire row up here was eaten. Uh, we still have a full line coming in here, theoretically. Theoretically. And now we have this belt here that has inserters and inserters and belts on it. Now, I know I did change the direction multiple times now, but being indecisive is okay. We're actually going to run it down here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make all our science produce on the very underside of the base. So we're going to have two sections of the base. We're going to have bottom, which will be all the sciences down here. 
And then the top will be all the items to make the science. So top, bottom. Easy. Heavy armor's flashing. It's probably triggering some people, so we'll quickly rip that out like that. And now we have it going down here like that. And we'll make our green science right here. And there we go. We automated the first two sciences. Have been completely automated. And we upscaled our base. And that's in about... Uh, if we go to save here and look at the save. I'm actually type time. It's been one hour and we have both sciences automated quite efficiently. Just one hour. Easy, easy. So now science is being made. We'll put one more assembler down there just for the sake of symmetry. And shift left click, shift right click to grab the items. Now we have our science right here. And we're actually going to put it onto the same line as this. That's a bit of a run around right now, but it'll make things a bit easier in the future when things are kind of cleanly set up. Maybe we'll make some more labs now. I could pull from the bottom side there as well, but for now, this looks like it works. I'll grab some more everything. And I have a nice little factory going on here. We haven't had to worry about biters yet. Uh, we turned them down quite a bit, so they're not too bad. But that will be probably our focus on next playthrough, is actually defending our base a little bit and showing some basic defensive strategies. Um, for those who know me and watch me on Twitch, uh, would know that I'm a pretty big uh, Death World player. I play with Biter settings on extraordinarily high settings. I think I might actually hold the world record for some of the most difficult maps I've ever played with Biters. Small starting areas and most ramped up difficulties. Um, so our strategy should help people adapt quickly and work. And here we're going to expand our power a little bit. Put you there. Rip out a power line or two. You need power as well. I just know for a fact that as we start pulling a lot of power, we're not going to have enough produced. So... Before, without even looking at it, I knew that power was about to be a problem. Now we're making so many of these labs that take forever. We'll rip those out for a second. Now what happens when your power grid actually is fluctuating like that is your buildings, while they're low power, will still work. And your inserters will still work. I was like to show you. It's actually probably better. Mm -hmm. So we'll see that they're still working, but watch what happens with their speed when they're working. They'll start going slower and slower and slower. They're making a fool out of me right now. They should get slower and slower and slower. They're kind of almost at full power. Almost. Doesn't work either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, if you look at them, they look very sluggish. So what happens eventually is your power starts getting worse and worse and worse as the inserters get slower and slower and slower, and that's fine. The base is kind of working, but what also happens is the miners work slower and slower and slower. So they're working at I don't know fifteen percent, twenty percent efficiency. So they start producing less coal. And then you start making even less power, and then the power, the problem kind of uh, exasperates itself. So, something to pay attention to is make sure you always have power. Our priority splitter we set up really helped. Made sure everything was working here properly. But uh, sometimes you don't do that. And then you have brownouts, and it's really annoying to try and fix. So, try and stay on top of the power until you get solar going. Automation 2 is finished. Automation 2 is nice because your assembler, the actual assembler will make every single building and item in the game. Uh, so you don't need the yellow assembler. This is as good as you really need to launch a rocket. This yellow one's better. This is also faster too. 
it's a 0.75 crafting speed versus the other one which is a 0.5 crafting speed so better um and it will craft everything for you so i think it's a good first tech next one i like to do is steel furnace steel furnaces are nice because it doubles the crafting speed of your smelting not half speed improvement or anything like that it actually doubles it uh, but they make a lot of pollution so just bear that in mind as well engines are for future tech uh red belts are quite a bit faster so instead of transporting 15 items a second they'll do 30 so twice as fast and then eventually you get these blue belts which are 45 so they're good a little more expensive but once you need just a little bit more throughput they're a good tech to get good tech to get but yes so the next tech we'll do will be steel furnaces uh then we'll do military because we want to do military for next playthrough or next playthrough our next uh next session i guess you could say we'll have military up and running and we'll work on the defenses of the base and we're gonna finish our power setup here just need one more boiler right there there you go that's grabbing water from both sides of the belt eventually we might move it around but for now i think that's fine and now if we look at our science here, we're actually backlogged. Just a little bit. And here, we're not actually using everything fast enough. So these guys don't, well, they're mostly working. But we're not using all the items in our belt either. So we could do this as well. Add some more across. Just keep going down and down and down forever. That's another reason why having a nice nice linear lines here makes things really easy, especially for your first playthrough of expanding your base. Um, later on in the playthrough, once we're around bots, I'm going to discuss different base, total base design ideas that people use um, and why I do certain bases and why I don't do other bases. But for now, we'll uh, stick with the somewhat bus design somewhat and here we're gonna have some more gears because we've noticed the gears here are really low and we need the gears over there and so with this design we can quite quickly add more supply if we do more supply build some more undergrounds like that some more assemblers another nice building to automate is automate all the items that you use so they call that a mall when you have a setup area that has like inserters assemblers furnaces power lines everything you need for your inventory set handcrafting you have a mall set up but i find that slows you down a bit at the beginning so setting up like this and handcrafting a few items never hurt anybody okay there we go so now we have I was going to say nine, 12 labs up and running. So our science will go moderately okay, moderately quickly. I'm about to hiccup there. Nice. Uh, we don't have enough coal, though. So a lot of my furnaces aren't working. And now we're going to get steel as well. So we're going to make some more mining drills. Like that. And we're going to grab more of this coal out of the ground. Anything over like 10k is fine with me. So like here, it's only 2,000 is going to be pulling out of the ground. Uh, that's not quite enough, I don't think, to make its own mining drill. And here, we don't want it to go like that. We want it like that. We want this guy to side load. It's fine. But we don't want the entire belt to be stuck on one side. So we kind of do a little veer action there. And that's fine. Fine, fine, fine. Grab this out. And we're going to get ready for steel right now. Just about to go grab the steel. This design here could probably get ripped out at this point. We're not really using it anymore. Kind of just, it's kind of just there. If you're doing really uh, aggressive gameplay and you want to expand very quickly, you could keep using that. But we're fine, letting a little bit of uh, stuff sit around. Grab that. holding Z over these buildings quickly. Why? It's just to get the coal out of my inventory. I just had so much in my inventory, I don't want it. And we're still making mining drills here. Grab a few more. Um, you notice I'm making green chips here as well in my inventory. You can just grab these ones as well. Make it faster. 
I don't need to handcraft everything. And then we can click these out. I don't want a burner. Grab those guys. And now we're starting to actually use our deposits. More and more and more. Military 2 is finished. Uh, we'll finish our military science and then we'll go get engines as well. And we'll explain the text as we go through. But while we're actually sciencing right now, quite quick-ishly. Quick-ishly, not really a word, but sure. Uh, we just want more to happen. We just want more. It doesn't really matter what the tech is. We're making the science anyways. We just need it to work. The factory is not allowed to sit idle. Grab some more belts. Up our coal production a bit more because we are eating more. Now, another way you can tell and see how everything is going is by pressing the P button. And the P button pulls up this overlay uh, called the production overlay. It's going to show how much you're making of different items. It's kind of a little confusing. I'm not a hugest fan of how it works, but whatever. You can kind of tell what's going on. So here we look at this. And over the period of one minute, we're producing 193 coal. And we're eating 133 of it. If for some reason, if you look over the period of 10 minutes, you're consuming as much as you're producing or more, it means you're not producing enough. So we're eating 960 coal and we only produce 950. And that's why we had to add more because we just weren't making enough. Close, but not quite enough. So. Must mine more. I'll rip this all out of the ground. Like that. And there we go. We got some more coal. And that should be enough to satisfy the base. And our science is going very quick right now. Uh, it's quicker than we can actually expand our factory. And then we're going to grab some more of this iron. This line here. We're going to run all the way up. We're going to join it into this line here. So we're going to assume that this, all this iron here, is eventually going to get used. Right now there's absolutely no coal. That's fine. There'll be some eventually. And we're going to move this line up. And we're going to make steel here now. So steel is the next, uh, one of the last, not one of the last resources, but one of the more advanced mined resources before you start getting oil. And oil should be not next playthrough, but the playthrough after we should get oil. And now we're going to make steel here. Steel is a one-to-one -one direct insert. So it says it takes five iron plates to make this work, but it's actually, it takes 16 seconds to make it. And each iron plate crafts in 3.2 seconds. So a one-to-one -one direct insert. So you make five, you make one of these. Five, one of these. So it looks like it might not be direct and you might be able to just pull off the line, but you can just do it like this. Direct insert. It just works nicely like that. We're going to stop that teching for a second. So we're going to have our steel going directly into our furnaces. Or our iron plates going directly into the next furnaces to make steel. But now you see a problem here very quickly is this also needs... This also needs um, fuel here as well. So how do you fuel this while at the same time pulling that out? And that's actually a great question. That's why I don't like this setup. I'm going to rip this all out quickly and show you the setup I actually like to use. Maybe shouldn't have built that much to make an example, but it works. So what I like to do is put two in a space, two in a space, two in a space, two in a space. This allows you to put your power lines in between the buildings. Kind of the same as my assemblers we're doing at the bottom. And now we can offload our steel here. And we can grab our coal long, the long inserter. So that side's like that, and this side's like this. And you can do that for the iron ore setup as well. Like that. So you're going to have your coal here. And your steel here. Now we're going to go do something kind of fun. We're going to move that power line for a second. And we need coal. 
And we know this coal right here, but we don't want this iron either. So we're going to do filter splittering. And we're going to pull just the coal. Off that belt. So it's going to stop with the iron right there, and then the coal is going to keep going through. That's how this building now has power. More fuel. I guess it's fuel. They kind of all have power, but now they have fuel as well. So now we're making steel. So now we have made green science and steel has been automated in our next uh, session playthrough. So we are upped our power. We got lots more resources coming out. We look at a production screen by pressing P uh, over the period of one hour. We're now using, you can see the bar is going up and up and up. So we've expanded this factory quite well, I think, for uh, our current session time. So there we have it. We have now automated red and green science and our production is shooting through the roof. Slowly but surely. And uh, next thing you know, we'll have a rocket. So we're going to stop there for this video. And uh, we should have another video very shortly with our military science. And then the one after that should be oil. So stay tuned for that. If you have any questions, always feel free to throw them in the comments. Thank you again if you made it all the way through the video to this point. And uh, until next we meet, it's Yamakar. Ciao for now.